but hi, hello, hi, welcome, welcome, or welcome back. My name is Wendy Ivy Martinez. Welcome to my channel. My name is also called The Geek Goddess here on YouTube. Yes. And today we are going to be talking about some brand new thriller and horror book releases for 2024. We are going to be talking about books that are actually going to be coming out June and July. Apparently none of these come out in August, so I'll probably make a video in August for videos that are going to be released in August, but these are mainly like June and July books that are releasing. So books that are coming soon to a bookstore near you. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so per usual, I usually start with the books that are coming out more recent. So like beginning of June all the way to you know, later on in the year. So let's go ahead and get started with the first book that we're going to be talking about. And it is called Small Town Horror by Ronald Moffey. So this is a combination of both a thriller and a horror novel. And in this one, we are following five friends who basically have a, they do something bad. They get together and do something that causes them to get cursed. And then as they grow older, we follow our main character, Andrew, who gets an unexpected phone call from an old friend. And now he has to go back to that small town and confront a knight that he just chooses not to remember. But he has to confront it and he has to face it or else it is threatening to unravel everything that Andrew and the rest of his friends have become okay so they built up a lot and it's about to all go down to shambles if they don't confront this so this one kind of gives me like middle of the night by riley sager vibes which we will also discuss too so that seems that's this one seems really interesting i wonder how it compared it's going to compare to the riley sager one this is a thriller slash horror that comes out june 4th i'm finding that i really love thriller horror book combinations like thrillers with like supernatural aspects to them very entertaining so i'm excited for this one so the next book that we're going to talk about is a horror movie by paul tremblay and this one is going to be coming out on june 11th this is also a combination of like a thriller and a horror like combo and i love this first of all the cover is absolutely jaw-dropping this cover is gorgeous okay i love this cover this is basically a new take on the, the the like cursed film trope horror trope that we see often and then this one we are following this like horror film that was like shot in like 1993 by a whole bunch of like amateur filmmakers and there was this like horror film was so twisted and like messed up that it never really saw the light of day other than like three scenes but these three scenes still grew like a huge fan base that like decades later people want a remake of this horror movie there is only one last remaining cast member survivor the rest had things that happened to them so he is going to help remake this film However, he's going to have to confront his past. Dark and twisted things happen on the set, okay? And I cannot wait to see what is revealed, what happened. It just seems like such a like psychological, mind-bending sort of horror thriller that I know I'm going to eat this up. And I'm excited for this one. So that, again, is a horror movie by Paul Tremblay. And it comes out June 11th. All right, so the next book that I'm going to be talking about is strictly just a thriller, and it is called The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. Like all Lucy Foley's books, this is going to be a like murder mystery thriller-ish sort of book. And in this one, we are actually following a very like prestigious manor and a whole bunch of guests that are very like into I'm assuming like occultish sort of things because they're getting like all these like drinks with like CBD in it and they're getting a bag of crystals and so it's supposed to be like this like healing spiritual sort of night at this manor and everything seems fine and dandy you know inside within the manor but outside of the manor a lot of local the local community is very mad with what the manor is doing because i think they think they're like overstepping on their toes clashing because then like the manor people are like no you're in private property and the like, community is like no you guys shouldn't be doing this this is our land or our community and stuff like that so they're basically clashing and then by the end of the night, 
there is a fire that breaks out there's a whole bunch of people that are fighting and a body is found and nobody knows who or what did it so we find out what went down the night of the midnight feast because not everyone survives and so again this is a thriller i haven't had good luck with lucy foley to be honest with you i've only read one book by her and that is the apartment the paris apartment something like that i didn't like it i didn't like the characters the story was very like bleh, you know what i mean so we'll see how this one goes i do like the cover though i do like the cover and i like how lucy foley is very consistent with like the font <laughs> that she uses on all her books i like that we like consistency love that okay so another thriller that is coming out on june 18th is middle of the night by riley saker this is one that i'm pretty sure you have seen me mention if you watch my 2024 new releases for thrillers and horrors but i mentioned this one and this one seems pretty similar to the other one the first book that i mentioned but this is more strictly thriller and the other one's like thriller horror so in this one we are following two best friends when they're 10 years old they decide to camp out in the backyard so this is not like the woods or anything like that it's literally just somebody's backyard and they decide to camp out 10 year old ethan which is our main character that we are following falls asleep and then the next day his best friend is nowhere to be seen the tent is torn nobody knows what happened to his best friend 30 years later ethan returns back to his childhood home and there are sightings of his best friend but he hasn't been seen since like they never discovered what happened to him who took him anything like that so ethan is like what is going on is somebody playing a prank on me so ethan decides to investigate what happened that night and see if he can remember something and find his friend once and for all this one seems again very interesting and i am very curious to how it compares to the other one because we have two you know friend groups that are that have to like face a night that they try not to face you know what i mean and go back in time because they're like oh some my friends popping back up again what can i do that's why it reminds me of each other except the other one i feel like it's gonna have more supernatural elements and i know riley sager strays away from that for the most part you know what i mean so I'm very curious about this one again love the cover i love me like bright green neon green lime green i love that color you'll never see me wearing it because it doesn't look good on me but i love that color i love seeing it so there's that one all right so on june 25th on the opposite side of the spectrum instead of just strictly thriller we have a strictly horror book in it it's called incidents around the house by josh mollerman and in this one this one sounds so interesting because we are actually following the perspective of a child we are following the perspective of eight-year-old bella and eight-year-old bella basically you know she's a normal girl she loves her mom she loves her dad she loves her grandparents but there's this other entity that seems a little bit more malevolent. Another entity that Bella calls the other mother. Yes, I'm getting Coraline feels, except this is a much more darker, adulter take on that, it seems like. And the reason why this entity is so malevolent is that she always asks Bella, hey, can I go inside your heart? Can mommy go inside your heart? To which Bella always replies, no. Now this entity is getting stronger and stronger and incidents begin happening around the house. Incidents that start breaking cracks within the family dynamic. We start to see the parents argue. We start to realize that their relationship isn't as picture perfect as they portrayed it to be. And we're trying to see if this family can really save Bella from this malevolent entity and also just to save the family overall because it is slowly ripping them apart i'm so excited for this one this one seems so like picture perfect because it literally reminds me of like Coraline for adults this is Coraline for adults like hands down Coraline for adults this is a definite definite like highly anticipated read and i'm super excited for it i'm super stoked the next one is a queer horror novel and i'm so excited for this one because i read a book by this author last year and it was actually one of my favorites and that 
is Chuck Tingle and he just wrote a book called Bury Your Gaze that comes out July 9th, 2024. And in this one we are following Misha and Misha is a script writer who basically writes scripts for Hollywood and one of his scripts has been nominated for a Oscar but then he starts to get pressured by his producers to kill off one of the gay characters and now Misha has to face his past as well as these producers that are sort of like forcing him to do this even when he doesn't want to do it and to see if he can fight back. I love the cover. It's like super like Grand Theft Auto Vice City vibes. <laughs> like Miami sort of vibes, you know what I mean? Like I know it's supposed to be LA, but this gives me Miami vibes. You know what I mean? With like the neon and all that stuff. I don't know. It looks really good. I liked Camp Damascus, one of my favorite books of 2023. So I, I of course, this is going to be like an automatic buy for me. Automatically, yes. Automatically, yes. This cover, yes. This author, yes. Yes. Yes to everything. So this next book comes out July 16th and it is a thriller horror and it is called I Was a Teenage Slasher by Stephen Graham Jones. Now Stephen Graham Jones is known for his like horror books especially. Uh, his, uh, I guess they would be considered slashers, like My Heart is a Chainsaw, I believe those are more like slasher-y vibes. And this one follows those like same, follows the same like slasher-y vibes. And we are following our main character, Tali, and Tali is a teenager and he's like very different, you know, he's like seen on the outskirts. And he is basically writing his own autobiography about being a teenage slasher. And in this story, we're supposed to almost feel like we're rooting for the slasher, the serial on a library in this book. And you're going to find yourself rooting for this person who's obviously doing some terrible things. But Stephen Graham Jones is following, is kind of like focusing on his own upbringing and, uh, you know, coming out like and growing up in Texas and kind of being like on the outside. So he's kind of exploring that part of him, but through this like fictional character, Tolly, in this sort of, in this like horror thriller sort of book. And I'm excited for this one. This is supposed, this says that it's perfect for fans of Riley, Riley Sager and Grady Hendrix. Riley Sager and Grady Hendrix have both been very hit or miss for me, but I have not read anything by Stephen Graham Jones. So I cannot say if I will like this or not, but it does pique my interest. So there is that one. Now let's move on to the very last book. Okay, so the last book is a thriller and it comes out July 30th and it is called Look in the Mirror by Katherine Steadman. And in this one we are following two characters. We are following Nina and Maria. Now when Nina's father passes away, she is left with this vacation home. And Nina is just left wondering where this vacation home, home even came from because her father didn't seem like he had the money to buy a vacation home that's like this huge and extravagant. Why did he keep this secret from her? And if this huge vacation home is possible, what else could he have been hiding? And then we follow Maria and Maria is a nanny for like the super rich. And Maria is like ready to like stop working as a nanny but her income is good and then when she doesn't get the money that she expects to be getting she decides to stay there for a little bit longer but the only rule is not to go in the basement and soon she's gonna wish that the only thing that she had to worry about was not getting paid something's down there Again, the covers are so amazing. I like the cover for this one as well. Let me know what books you guys are most excited to read. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button and turn it on that turn on that notification bell to be notified when I post. I usually post twice a week. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!